More than 4.3 million people have contracted COVID-19 in the U.S., but now that number is hitting closer to home than ever for us here at News for Jax. Reporter and anchor and my wonderful co-worker, Vic Michelucci, is one of the millions of people now recovering from COVID-19. He tested positive last week. He joins us this morning. Vic, you're looking way better than you were a few days ago. How are you feeling today? Hey, Lauren, thanks for checking in, and I appreciate you calling me and texting me and making sure that I'm good. You know, I, I feel pretty good today. I'm being cautiously optimistic because I know that I have not completely recovered from this virus, and I need to take it slowly. That's not something that's in my nature. I want to go back out there and do things, but I also know that this is a mean, nasty bug, so I need to, you know, take it slowly and uh Still got a little bit of a headache, had a little bit of a fever yesterday. The cough is still there, so is the chest congestion, but we're getting there day by day, hour by hour. And, you know, we've been talking throughout this, and that first week, though, it, it, it broke my heart to hear how bad you were doing. Can you explain to the viewers at home kind of the symptoms you had? Yeah, and Lauren, we don't want to admit weakness <laughs> nowadays, especially in the age of social media when you can be roasted for anything. But I felt terrible. I didn't want to get out of my bed. I mean, walking to the fridge, going to the restroom was a big to do, let alone driving across town to get that COVID-19 test, which ultimately came back positive. You know, so it, it started where I just woke up and I didn't feel myself. I had a headache and didn't have a reason to believe that I was getting sick, but I just something was off. Within a couple of hours, I had found out that I had been exposed to a person who recently tested positive. Shortly after that, I felt like a ton of bricks hit me. I know it's cliche, but that's the best way to describe it. My temperature was changing every time I took my uh, thermometer out. So I went up to about 101.4. I had the body aches. I had the chills. I had the sweats. I wasn't comfortable. Then it turned into stomach pain, then it turned into a cough, shortness of breath, a lot of the things that you would see when people describe the coronavirus. And I still have what's being described as a mild case. So certainly I'm not one to complain and I don't want that to be what this interview is about because I know there are so many people that literally cannot breathe, that have to go to the hospital, some intubated in the ICU. And through this process, I've learned just how fortunate I am to, at least so far, have not experienced those symptoms. I've heard from so many people, Lauren, uh, who have been so much sicker or their loved ones have been so sick. Some of them, in fact, I've probably had four or five people that say they've lost a loved mm. one due to COVID-19 and my heart breaks for them. You know, and, and I know you are you are so proud and you did, but you didn't do, you didn't talk about this because you wanted to do a story. No, you didn't want to be sick, but you, a lot of the families that are dealing in the hospital right now are actually reaching out to you, thanking you for sharing your experience. Why do you think that is? Yeah, and this story is about them. It's not about me. Look, I'm not unique or special. I'm one of about four and a half million Americans who have this virus. And, you know, I've gotten literally hundreds of emails. I, I stayed up as late as I could last night. I knew I had to do the morning show today, just trying to respond to everybody. And, you know, so many people say, thank you for sharing this, because as many people have this virus, in my opinion, you don't hear from that many. And there's a stigma about it. Look, the first time that I go out, even after I recover and I go to the grocery store, I know I'm probably going to get looks and people are going to be concerned and, and people are going to want to stay away. And I've heard some of that sentiment from people that are saying, oh, look, look at you, you know, crying wolf, this and that. But, you know, the, the message is it's OK to speak about it. It's OK to talk about it. And you're not alone even though physically you are. And that's been one of the harder things here is I've been locked in my house away from anybody for more than a week. And I knew that I had to do that to be responsible to stop this virus from spreading. But it's not fun. This is the longest that I've ever been without any kind of contact yeah. with another human. And, and if you know, and if you know Vic, tough. and if you know Vic, you know that he does not sit at home. He does not do this. And I, I think something I want you to hit on is because, because of that is 
what an isolating experience it really is. I think it's so important that people hear, you know, they're, we're here for you. We understand what you're going for. You're not alone. Yeah. And, you know, in the first several days of the virus, I did not put it out for the public to know because I was battling it and I, I needed my privacy. Obviously, the people who had been in contact with me knew. Thankfully, they're all healthy. They're all safe. Uh, the people that, you know, I, I care about and love the most knew. But other than that, I, I kind of wanted to keep it quiet because I did not know what was going to happen next, Lauren. And, uh, you know, eventually I made that decision saying, look, I've been reporting on this crisis for months. I, I feel like there is still a lack of information and there's a lack of transparency and everybody has their own prerogative as far as what they want to do with telling their story if they have COVID-19 or if a loved one does. It, it was my goal to tell this story and to say, hey, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to show that that you're a little bit weak right now and that you're vulnerable and that we're going through this. And again, uh, you know, my heart hurts for the people that, that have it so much worse. I have friends that are in the hospital. I have friends who have lost uh, their parents, their siblings. And this virus is very real. It's not going away. You can turn off social media, you can turn off the news and it'll feel like it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, these numbers are still here. People are getting diagnosed every day. People are getting hospitalized every single day. And sadly, we're losing Americans and people across the world every day. Vic, we love you. You know, I love you. We miss you and we will see you very soon. Thank you so much. We'll check in with you and thank you for sharing your story with us. Much love.